Welcome to a special edition of Cardinals Insider. I'm Ozzie Smith. Today, we look a little different. Our cameras got inside access to some of the Cardinals who played in the World Baseball Classic this spring. It became a documentary we call Baseball Abroad. Cardinals at the WBC. We bring it to you now, but I'll be back afterwards for a postscript. We hope you enjoy. I mean, baseball really brings the two cultures together. Baseball is king over here. Been walking with open arms here. It's been pretty cool. It's been really cool to see Lars embrace Team Japan and see Japan embrace Lars as well. I've seen baseball all over the world. I've seen baseball in probably 15 different countries. And the passion that is involved in these countries is really amazing. When we think of our hometown St. Louis Cardinals, we don't think that, my gosh, we have players. Canada, Italy, Japan, Korea. We really are an international organization. We believe it's beneficial for the player and also it's beneficial for the game. One thing that sticks out to me is just the enthusiasm that everybody has throughout the game. The whole Korea is actually a big fan of Tommy now. Being in the Tokyo Dome and looking across the field and, and seeing a familiar face. Pretty cool moment out there to be able to be playing against Tommy. Great atmosphere for us to be able to see this talent from different countries all come together. Here at the Tokyo Dome, I mean, the, the environment is, is electric for sure, especially when Japan is playing. Um, I mean, they have, when their team is on offense, they have constant music going on out there. I, I think they have uh, a whole section designated just for playing music, and, and they have unique walk-up songs for every single player that I'm pretty sure uh, they, they made up. It's awesome. I mean, it really is. It, it's, it's, I mean, nine innings. You know, they're out there playing the trumpet, singing the songs for, for nine whole innings. Last night we only played for four hours and you know they didn't lose they didn't, they didn't skip a beat. So it just goes to show you how special, you know, how passionate these fans are about baseball. It means so much to them and it meant so much to my mom growing up and now I, I kinda understand why why she was so passionate about it. I've seen baseball all over the world. I've seen baseball in probably fifteen different countries and the passion that is involved in these countries is, is, is really amazing. The chanting before every at-bat, uh, the dancing in the stands in Korea and Taiwan, the, the energy in the stands in the Dominican Republic and Venezuela is exciting as well. In the United States, our fans like to sit there, watch, and analyze the game and study the game. Here in Japan, fans come to the game, it's kind of like a release at times. It's like a, a way for them to express themselves when they have to work all day long and, and have a tight type of personality. They come to these games and they chant all along and it's really kind of a therapeutic experience for fans. It's an outlet, right? <laughs> a very reserved people need to have an outlet somewhere and this is one of the outlets for them. So you can't do that on the you can't be boisterous on the train or as you're walking down the street or doing your job at an office. If you come to the ballpark, you're going to let it all out, and that's, that's what they do here. It's, it's funny. Coming here kind of reminds me a little bit about that. You know, in St. Louis, where you go to St. Louis and, and they're so passionate. The stadium's always packed, and they're cheering loud, and, and they're, you know, they're, they're a proud fan base, and so is Japan. So those are similarities. A lot of the baseball aspects are really similar. You know, baseball is a universal language, like you know we all know. Um, but the intricacies of you know the system, or how you analyze uh, in such different situations, is a lot different. A lot of attention uh, to the small details of the game, and that's kind of something I've learned just from the practices. A lot of a lot of attention uh, to base running, all the fundamentals, um, the defense, uh, defensive strategies. They stress the fundamentals a lot more in Japanese baseball than we do. Bunting is taken very seriously here, and even if you are a cleanup hitter or you're batting third, fourth, fifth in the lineup, you still know how to bunt, and you might be asked to bunt. Having Tommy here, or a lot of you know exposure internationally for Korean baseball is a great thing for Korean baseball uh, development. I think one thing that sticks out to me is just the enthusiasm that everybody has throughout the game. Um, it's always just a, a constant constant encouragement in the dugout, um, regardless of what's going on in the game or what's just happened. It's, everybody's kind of always uplifting each other, which is uh, 
a great message, especially with how stressful the game of baseball can be. It's, uh, it's been a, a wild experience just to see uh, the differences between uh, United States and, uh, and Japan in terms of the fan experience. Um, obviously, there's, there's great sides to both. Um, but it's, it's definitely been uh, eye-opening. And Taguchi hits one into left field, back at the wall, this ball is gone. So to Gucci, a home run to put St. Louis on top, seven to six here in I the I had ninth actually year. met So when he was still playing in Japan. In 2000, he was on the Japan All-Star team that played the Major League All-Stars in 2000 when they came over here. Front page news in Japan. I, I couldn't even imagine that So would sign with the Cardinals. 2-2 two -two delivery is a slow curveball swung on and missed. And that pitch, I don't even think it registered. I think we've done a good job of some players that we've acquired from this market. And going forward, it's even going to become more fruitful. It just shows that our brand is growing. The Cardinal brand is everywhere in the United States. It's growing in Latin America. And now it's really growing in Asia. The pitch, a swing and a fly ball, left field. Randall Gretchik is there for a Redbird winner. Frazier with the fly ball. I was ball. with the Cardinals in 2016 and 17 when uh, a uh, pitcher named Sung Wan Oh was pitching for the Cardinals. Uh, I was lucky to be his uh, personal interpreter and team interpreter for the Cardinals. And a 2 2 from uh, Mr. Oh. Swing miss. We go to the bottom. Um, the we had such a great time there, and um, the fans there were great, and the people there were amazing. I just remember really, you know, a lot of love uh, from Cardinals fans and Bush Stadium. It was a very cool moment in the exhibition game before the WBC started. Lars went over and introduced himself to So, two, you know, two Cardinals 20 years apart, and that was very cool. KK and Sun Wan Oh really helped us out in Korea, and I really feel like Japan is realizing that the Cardinals are, are a major organization in the MLB, and we have a chance to really take advantage of that. Hopefully we'll continue to maybe acquire high-level talent from these countries in, in the near future. There's no doubt in my mind that Lars has grown as a player by this experience he's had over the last two weeks. This is trouble. Oh, Lars Luper. Playing with the teammates he's playing with, he's playing with all-star caliber players. And he's showing he right there he belongs. He's the leadoff hitter of Team Japan. That, that's an amazing accomplishment in itself. They've embraced him. I mean, his middle name is Tatsuji, <laughs> and they have latched onto that, and they now call him Tachan, which is kind of like an affectionate way to say Tatsuji, like how you would, you would, you would address like a, a, a kid named Tat, Tatsuji, you'd call him Tachan. Pitch to Lars Nupon, grounded up the middle, and Tachan delivers for the home crown, the Tokyo Dome. The Tachan nickname. The, the, the team kind of started that, and it's kind of, you know, the fans kind of ran with it. And now, as he walks to the, 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 the plate for an at-bat, like the whole stadium is going, Moo. And then as soon as he gets in there, they change, right, to their, to their song, and their Katobase Tatsuji. <laughs> I mean, it's the first time I'm, I'm playing in, in, in these domes in, in, in Japan, and, and I kind of heard it in the back, you know, in, in the background. I was like, dang, that's, that's pretty cool. He's gotten to know the guys on his team really well. Um, it's uh, Otani and Darvish, I think, have taken him in. Me using uh, Ipe as an interpreter, you know, Shohei still using Ipe as his, you know, translator staff assistant, you know, we kind of spend a lot of time with each other. 2-2 two -two pitch, poke to center, Nupar racing in, Lars Nupar for the sliding catch. Those two have struck up quite a bond and a friendship.
in a hurry. You know, he's such a good guy, welcoming guy, and you know, he's he kind of runs the show around here. So um, I just follow his lead. That's the whole point, you know, to be yourself and to bring bring to our team something that an element that we don't have. So the fact that he's able to do that and do that so naturally, I think, is one of the one of the many reasons that they're so accepting of him. They want that. And so he's able to provide that, and so they're very, they're very appreciative of it. There's been uh, a lot of guys on the team who are very welcoming. Uh, asked me out to eat the first, uh, first couple of nights, and. Um, it's definitely tough when you go to a team where you don't speak the same language, but um, they've really embraced me with open arms and uh, I couldn't be more grateful for that. It's been a really great experience so far. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know the, uh, the Korean culture and, and uh, see how the other side of the world um, kind of embraces the game of baseball. And um, It's been a really neat experience. Um, learned a lot and uh, just had a great time over here. It's pretty amazing uh, being in the Tokyo Dome and looking across the field and, and seeing a familiar face. Good friend, good teammate of mine too. Uh, it's 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 comforting, you know, knowing that yeah, I got another guy here with me. But um, yeah, pretty pretty cool moment, I think. Pretty special moment to be able to be playing against Tommy. We've texted a little bit back and forth, but uh, when we were in Osaka, uh, times you know he was playing before me, I was playing after. Same with here. So this is the first time we've been able to to see each other. It means a lot to both of their families to represent uh, Japan and Korea, respectively. And it's helping them grow as players. It really is. It's well worth it because of the pressure that they play under. And there's more meaning to it. For some reason, there's more meaning when you're playing a game when you have your country across the front of your jersey. I think just having been surrounded by my Korean culture for the past week, week and a half, I've really learned a lot about kind of where, where I came from, where my mom and her family came from, and has really helped me kind of dig into those roots, and especially with the kind of feelings of respect for your elders and for, for where you came from. Um, so I think in that sense, that's something I'll, I'll really take away from this experience, and I've really enjoyed getting to, getting to have. I think uh, the whole Korea is actually a big fan of Tommy now. I, I read like the posts on Instagrams or you know a lot of comments on social media because I'm on the PR side again and uh, it's all just welcoming and uh, people are just so excited to have him. You don't realize it, but every day you know when you're growing up, you, you know like my mom instilled some Japanese in me, you know, and obviously like I grew up a little bit different than most most I guess like you know kids did in America because I had a foreign mother. But being able to come here and really embrace it and understand, you know why there are some of the things that she does. It's been special to me to really, to really soak that all in. And I haven't been down here since I was probably six years old. So getting kind of an adult or a, a big kid, I guess, because I'm a big kid, perspective of how she grew up. Uh, it's really, I mean, I've never been more proud to be a Japanese man. Yeah, we, we believe it's beneficial for the player and, and also it's beneficial for the game. This is growing the game internationally. Um, what Lars and Tommy have done for um, our brand in Japan and Korea, you know, we, we wouldn't be able to duplicate that in another way. And I think it's helping them out as players as well. Here we go. Two pitch. Mm -hmm. Hope to center. Newbar racing in. Lars Newbar with a sliding catch. Number 23, He throws. Trout strikes out swinging. Samurai Japan! WBC! Oda! Dakkan!
hope you enjoyed our documentary. Now it's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Today's question comes from the Cardinal Insider staff. They ask, what did you enjoy most about playing in the 1992 Major League Baseball Japan All-Star Series? Well, one of the things that I enjoyed was getting to experience a different culture. And baseball has come a long way since 1992. You know, the fact that they, they won the WBC championship, I think at the time it, was, um, it wasn't considered uh, on the same level as Major League Baseball or, um, here in the States, but they have come a long way and uh, now they're stars and one of the biggest stars happened to be Shohei Otani. Well, of course, the fans in the stands were beating drums the whole time, you know, so you had to get used to the echo of, of the drums out there in the outfield. And it was a totally different atmosphere, but it was one that was uh, an atmosphere of excitement and um, I think the guys all enjoyed it. We'll return to taking your questions next week. And if you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, don't go anywhere. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. Lars Newtbar became an international star during the World Baseball Classic. You heard from him earlier. That interview covered his experience in Tokyo, but was conducted before the end of the tournament. We caught up with him again recently to discuss the final portion, including his gold medal win. Welcome back to Baseball Abroad, Cardinals at the WBC. I'm Emily Stevens and joining me is Lars Newtbar. Lars, obviously I want to talk to you about the WBC, but specifically your time in Japan. Yeah. Pretty cool that our cameras were there to yeah. follow you around. But let's start with this. What exactly were you told before going into this? And then what was it like once you got there? Um, before going in, I was kind of told expect a lot. I knew the media was going to kind of be hectic over there. Baseball-wise, I was told to take it very seriously and um, that they were going to take it very seriously. My mom kind of scared me going into that about that. She kind of prepared me for the worst and I think it was for the best because I went over there and they were great coaches, teammates, everybody. So, you know, overall my preconceived, I guess, like ideas of what would happen versus what actually happened um, was great. Baseball is king over there. Yeah. It honestly looked like a World Series game. Right. I mean, from the people standing, they were banging drums, they were playing trumpets, they yeah. were chanting the whole game. It was, yeah, that, that was like the craziest thing. And last night, actually, of, of course, my mom came when we played against Shohei. Her and, her and one of her Japanese friends came to St. Louis, and um, I was dropping them off at the airport last night, and they were singing my like fight song. And it brought back so many good memories to think like how intense and how crazy and passionate these fans are. Um, you know, it, it was really cool for me to be able to go over there for the first time and experience that and um, really see how much they really do love baseball. How did the pepper grinder discussion go? Did you kind of say, you know, hey man, this is something we do in St. Louis. Do you want to grind some pepper with me here in Japan? Is that what you said? Or? Kind of. It was, it was, so it was like uh, we were out there and uh, for two days and before we had played and the team played two games and me and Shelly were kind of just watching and, and I was like, hey, like, what do you think about you know celebrations like what do you guys do with the angels and he's like oh we don't really do anything and i was like well you know like is it okay to do with this team you know first of all and then i was like we kind of do the pepper grinder thing i asked darvish what their team does but he's a pitcher so it didn't really count so then um you know i was like you know we do the pepper grinder and he said you lead off you get a hit do whatever you want to do at first base and it'll blow up and then um he said he would do it and he did and then it blew up and um you know, he, he called it, he called it kind of. It blew up on Twitter for sure. Yeah, I'm not on Twitter, so I, I didn't really know the reaction of every, everybody, but um, the fans seem to love it. You know, baseball's different over there, and you brought a lot of passion with you, um, not only from, you know, the pregame speeches, the on-field press conferences. Why was it so important to you to bring that energy? Yeah, I think, um, like I said, like going into it, I was, I was pretty nervous. You know, I didn't want to embarrass my mom, my family's name, and honestly, the U.S., because it was the first time a U.S.-born citizen was going over and playing, you know, for Team Japan. So I told the media and I told the coaches and I told the team when I got there that I was going to play hard and, play, you know, play as best as I could, and um, effort was going to be there. And then I think with effort comes passion, and for me, that brings out my energy, and so ended up working out well, which is nice. But, um, but yeah, I, I just think I, I didn't want to do anything to embarrass or disrespect or do anything like that. I just think I, I just wanted to be authentic, and, and um, all that stuff kind of came out. All right, last one. Your Instagram followers skyrocketed. Yeah. You've been in, I think, at least two Japanese commercials yeah. so far. Um, what does it mean to you to be so loved as a person and a player 
now in multiple countries. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think my mom is more famous in Japan than I am, so <laughs> she kind of takes the cake with that. My dream is to be like your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't really think too much about it. Uh, it just kind of, like, I'm not a huge social media guy or anything like that, but um, I just try to be myself. I think the cameras or whatever, you know, like the people, they kind of show my personality more than I actually do. And, and so um, I really do enjoy it. And um, it's nice because I'm just being myself and then people kind of, you know, enjoy that. So if it gets me some free trips to Japan too, I'll, I'll take that with it. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's been an awesome ride so far. Well, Lars, it was a lot of fun to watch you play. Thank you. And obviously congrats on taking the gold. Thank you. That had to have been really exciting. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much. That's it for this episode. We'll return to our normal format next week. You can always catch us online at cardinals.com slash insider or watch full episodes on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. And for everyone involved with the show, I'm Ozzie Smith, and I'll see you right back here next week.